they're a classic fixture on the American shopping scene, the corner convenience store. Since the early 30s, convenience stores have been serving the needs of Americans, whether it's a hot cup of coffee on the way to work, a soda on a hot afternoon, or medication for that major headache. Over the past few decades, however, the convenience store has evolved to meet changing customer demands by offering new, convenience-oriented products so customers can get in and out fast. No one is better prepared to serve customers quickly than Store 24. The company has 82 urban and suburban stores throughout the northeastern United States. Top-selling products are cigarettes, milk, coffee, baby formula, and newspapers. And most sales transactions only take about 30 seconds to complete. The stores themselves aren't the only classics at work, however. Behind the scenes, managers use a classic planning tool called Cost Volume Profit Analysis, or CVP, to evaluate what might happen if they change the price of coffee, or start selling money orders, or rearrange store layout. In fact, there are few plans made that won't benefit from CVP analysis. Paul Doucette, CFO, explains the plans made by Store24 using CVP analysis. CVP analysis is most often used where we have investments or major projects being considered in a store where actually the finance department will work with both marketing and operations to understand the implications of a project, what the fixed costs will be, what our expected return on investment is, and we actually model out as part of the approval process uh, how we think the comprehensive result will be for the specific product. So it's more often used in projects that do require an investment more so than item selection type things where you have fixed space and you're just trying to change products on uh, the shelf. CVP analysis does require a few key assumptions in order to be useful. For example, analysis assumes that changes in levels of revenues and costs arise only because of changes in units produced and sold. And output units, such as finished sandwiches, are the only revenue and cost drivers. Selling price, unit variable costs, and fixed costs are known and constant, and time value of money is ignored. Depending on the plans to be made, CVP analysis can help determine break-even sales volumes or target operating income and net income. The best recent example was our review of our deli operations. We had several stores that we offered prepared fresh foods in the store and uh, it required us to change our reporting, financial reporting, to understand the results of that operation. Our normal P&L is reported at the entire store level and to, in order to do a CVP for the deli food service we had to create a new P&L that isolated the sales, food costs, waste, direct labor and benefits and we even went down to estimating electricity and, and rent costs related to the space of the deli operation and after the result of that exercise we found we had a marginal profitability model in our operation and the alternative was instead of making them buying them pre-made so our new strategy is to we've outsourced to a commissary and they are making our sandwiches to our specifications delivering them wrapped direct to the store and the advantage is now we've got a sandwich that's ready to just grab and go to our customers at any time of day because often we had customers very late at night that wanted a sandwich and they'd come in and the deli was closed so we think uh, in the early results although we've lost some sales the profitability instantly increased because the labor was so great to provide the deli operation so the the conclusion of doing that CVP is that it gave us a better financial result and we think a better executable offering to uh, our customers of just having consistent products always ready in the store. It can also be helpful in determining whether to advertise, change a product's selling price, or even whether to pursue a seemingly desirable course of action. 
Several years ago, Starbucks entered the Boston market, and coffee is about 3% of our total sales, and so our food service manager at the time said, well, we really have to get ready to compete, so uh, he wanted to bring in a line of Italian espresso machines that cost about $5,000 each, and we were a little unsure that we were really going to compete with Starbucks, and we did a quick CVP, and with the labor to do it and the cost of the machine that we did really felt it didn't fit our market and we weren't going to be able to deliver that sort of a product so we opted not to uh, offer that product. Store 24 has also performed sensitivity analysis with its CVP results. We're now in our second year of chain-wide scanning and we use that detail information to support a, a decision support system for the marketing department to do sensitivity analysis. And a, a good recent example is in the beverage category where they created a new price zone for our city stores where in downtown locations we found we were able to charge slightly more and it may only be a nickel more per product in the downtown locations where we have higher rents that helps us to offset the higher costs in those locations. And it's significant in that our average product margin is 30 percent, but our pre-tax operating profit is only one and a half percent. So a slight improvement in retail prices can directly go to the bottom line and help improve results. CBP analysis may take a little bit of time to prepare for each Store 24 location. Stores can be quite different from one another. Some are in urban locations. Others have high rent. A few sell subway passes. Income levels and cultures vary between neighborhoods, which means different product mixes. But the goal is always the same. Make sure managers are making the right decisions to keep their stores profitable. And yes, make sure the customer is satisfied each visit. After all, they want you to come back, even if it's only for a few seconds every day.